I'm Andrew Smith from the Open University ASC ITC. So far we've shown you how to create a course, how to hack a course, how to look at the analytics I say that again, the analytics and monitoring students on a course. Now we're just going to do the exam activation in a little bit more detail. So we've got the course that we worked on earlier. We're looking at our famous student Android and we're going to jump to the tab with the course that we've hacked, albeit not in a very elegant way. So we're going to go to the assessment centre and I am now going to activate the exam. So we're just wait for it and I'm going to create an activation profile. This may seem like a lot of work now but soon, if especially if you've got a course running over a prolonged period, this will actually make your life considerably easier. For chapters, I do want multiple attempts and I don't want to keep reactivating the attempts. I do not consider chapters to be mission critical, though I do consider them to be incredibly useful, mass and development. You can do five attempts, as you can see, you could offer them 40 attempts. If they're taking more than five attempts, I'd like to basically understand why a student is spending so often doing each of those attempts. Again, I could give them one hour, two hours, it's up to me. Um, but when I'm doing distance learning, the more times the better, just to ensure that the student doesn't feel under pressure. Basically, for a um, exam activation, it just gives them time to work through the 20 to 30 questions maximum. And what you can also say is, if it, are you going to do it in secure conditions? i.e. you're going to do it in the classroom and you're going to be pacing up and down with a baseball bat. Less secure conditions where they could actually just Google, use Wikipedia, or you're not controlling it at all, um, where you're basically saying, well, we don't mind about the chapters at all. We want them to go and do it anywhere, anytime. Again, with the chapters, I have no emotion about these personally and professionally, but the final exam at my university, we still set the CCNA 2 and CCNA 4 at the moment under exam conditions because they have got voucher value. Whereas um, chapters like finals like CCNA 1, it's not so critical. But I do know of academies that prefer to do all of the finals under exam conditions. You have to choose. You have to make that decision. So I'm now going to create the activations. And for this student, I've decided I'm going to activate the first six because he or she, I want them just to progress up to a certain point before we review their pro progress. I'm going to create advanced activations and I'm going to activate them from the 2nd of September. Obviously this is the time that um, works. So we're going to do it from 1 a.m. and we're going to do it for a period of time. So we've got a half term review, let's say, at the end of um, October. So I'm going to get them to do it until 11.59 in the evening. And they're all available. And I'm just going to say it's unsure at this time. Can you see it's already defaulted for me? And I'm going to create the advanced activations. And it's there and it's ready and activated. And I'm going to manage activations. And I can actually see the exams. I can see the forms. And I can see what's been activated for the student. And you can actually go in and deactivate the exam for the student if you wish and reactivate it. I typically activate all of them at any given time. And once the student's done the exam, they will be you'll be able to see the result in the grader. If you're wondering what they're doing in the exam, now I'm not going to cl click on this in too much detail. I can look at each of the exams and the results, the questions for each exam. I'm going to actually just click on the um, pre-test exam just to prove a point because I don't normally use this and I'm actually going to look at English Form B. Okay, that's the details. Yeah, so I'm going to look at English Form B and actually click on the right link, I'm sorry. And I'm not going to look in detail at this but you can actually look at each of these. You can click on each of these 
and you can actually see, yeah, all the questions and all the answers. Remember, Netacad is mastery. Cert certification exams are what really count, but it it's there to enable you to enable the student. You've done some of these courses already. You can now go and look. It's not about your students getting 100%. You'll be a very weak teacher if that's the way you see the world. It's about you using the tools to enable your students to get the confidence and the mastery so they can pr get the professional development to gain the certifications to get into a career. That's what it's really there for. But you can see um, each of these if you so wish. So I'm just going to go back to the assessment centre and I'm not going to labour on this anymore. So you can activate the exams for a period of time and then you can see which ones are activated and then you can manage this accordingly and you can set up an activation profile and you can look at the attempts from each student. Obviously there is none at the moment and you can actually look at the questions themselves as well as tweak the profile to main manage all of your activations in a easy to manage way. So hopefully you found this useful. It takes t a little bit of time to get used to this tool because it is a legacy tool from the old Virtuoso system dating back over 20 years ago. But saying that, it is actually a very powerful tool where millions of students have done multi-million exams through the system over the last 20 years. So it does serve quite a useful purpose. Thank you very much.